Now, if we were on a tour bus, I would call, you would get on the tour bus and I would say, Aloha. So say it back to me. Aloha. So you really extend out that love. We're having fun this morning. I would say to you, E como mai, welcome to our first Aloha Sunday. It's a pleasure and joy to be experience and expressing diversity. We have a core commitment and an intention to celebrate diversity. And one of the ways to do that is to share, to explore other cultures. And Hawaiian culture and Hawaiian spirituality is one of those ways to embrace. In the Hawaiian culture, the hula, the language at one time was illegal to share because people had come into the islands and decided that they wanted to change things and so could not dance hula and you could not speak in Hawaiian. It was just illegal to do so. So somebody came in and decided to take that culture away. The beautiful thing is in life, most cultures just simply grow un go underground and they continue to grow. So what you see in a lot of language, what you see in a lot of dance is that there is another level or another layer of truth that gets expressed. And the same is true in Hawaiian culture. We have different levels of truth. The first level of truth, another level, another level. We could go infinite with levels of truth. And we're exposed to those levels of truth based on our consciousness. It's just very much like we live from our consciousness wherever it is in any moment. And it's ever changing. The beautiful thing about Hawaiian culture is that Hawaiian culture focuses on harmony. Harmony with God, living in harmony with self and each other, and living in harmony with the land, the aina. The, the Hawaiians don't have a concept of being out in nature, like we, ah, we went out to the ocean today. There's no concept of being out in nature, so it's expressed as simply the earth. Honua is the word for earth, which is also the secondary meaning of that is the foundation. So when we are on the earth, we are in the very foundation of life. We are on the very foundation of life. In the Hawaiian culture, there's no distinction, there's no separation between this is my real life and this is my spiritual life. It all flows together. It's one. So there's no separation. The woman who put a lot of information together about Hawaiian culture oops, is this woman, Dr. Mary Kavita Pukui. She was a Hawaiian scholar. She wrote a book called, it's on the right here, Olelo no Iao. It's a book of wisdom sayings. There are 3,000 Hawaiian proverbs or wisdom sayings that the one that we're talking about today comes out of. And the one that we want to talk about today, the one I'm sharing with you guys today is Iho Kai Kai Ke Aloha. The I is actually pronounced as an E, and it's a marker. E, E, pay attention. That's really what it's saying. Hey, pay attention. Jesus did this in his parables when he said, listen up, what do you make of this? So the Hawaiians will get your attention. It was originally an oral language, not a written language. So A or E, pay attention, is an important marker. I'm going to say something that's important. Ho'apai means oneness. Ka'i is place. Aloha, one meaning of aloha is love. We often say aloha when we are coming up and saying hello to somebody or when we're leaving. Aloha means love, but when you break it down, de alo is divinity. It's being in the presence of divinity. And the ha is the breath. So when we talk about being one in love, or the exact tra translation is one place love. One place love. There's only one place in this universe, and that place is love. Or we translate it a little bit less clunky and to be one in love. But when we say aloha to each other, we're also saying, I'm in your divine presence, and you're in my divine presence. And let's share the breath of the presence in the room, which is divine. 
So we're being, we're in a possibility of love at all times. Charles Fillmore defines love as love in divine mind, and this is Charles Fillmore, he was the co-founder of Unity. Divine mind is one of his definitions or his names for God. Place whatever name for God you want on there. You can source energy, all that is, whatever you're most comfortable with. But love in divine mind is the idea of universal unity. In expression, love is the power that joins and binds in divine harmony in the universe and everything in it. Hawaiian spirituality, we're coming together in divine harmony. Well, we as spiritual beings having a human experience are still in that process quite often of learning how to do the harmony part. Do you all get along with yourself perfectly? I won't ask about anybody else. <laughs> Do you get along with yourself? We have difficulty being harmonic with ourselves. So think about that. In oneness, if I'm struggling to be in harmony with myself, how great the struggle is if I think that I'm separate from you. It's a bigger struggle because it really starts with ourselves. In the King James Version of the Bible, there are 310. 10 references to the word love. So I like to look these things up. You know, I'm a little bit of an intellectual. So I look these things up. In the New Revised Standard Version, there's 527 references to love. And I'm like, okay, what is this about? I'm very curious. So as I continue to do some research, what I discover is in the King James Version, the writer of that version of the Bible uses charity and love interchangeably. So we often think of charity as, oh, so-and-so needs help, I'd like to help them out, so we're going to give them some money, we're going to give them some things, we're going to help in some way. But if you go to dictionary.com, which I really love, dictionary.com, not one, not two, not three, not four, not five, not six, but on the seventh, Definition. You know how many definition words have different definitions? On the seventh definition, that definition of charity is actually being lenient in judgment. Being lenient in judgment. It so fits with what Mr. Fillmore says. In expression, love is the power that joins and binds in divine harmony in the universe and in everything. Love is the cornerstone of spirituality. We're either in the flow of love or we're out of the flow, one of the few dichotomies of life. But most of us are challenged by love. We have great intentions. Have you ever had the thought, I'm going to be more loving today? And then what happens? <laughs> Every possible opportunity to not be will show up in your life until you get really committed to being love. It will show up. So what happens is it shows up in a lot of different ways. It shows up in judgment. It shows up in criticism. It shows up in the way we treat each other when we're not being lenient with our judgment. But the beautiful thing is we were not taught these skills at home quite often. Some of you may have been. But so often in home, at school, we're not taught these skills of learning how to communicate with each other in a way that's loving. Love, the master healer, the harmonizer, the glue that holds the world together. That's what Charles Fillmore talks about love as. But how do I harmonize with you when I'm mad at you? How do I harmonize with you when I'm scared about something in my life? So often we have love mixed up with control or drama, or I want you to meet my needs. How do we change that? It's actually much simpler than you might think. And as you probably have guessed already, it's a practice. <laughs> and here's how it can go. We're in the flow of love. We're in that cosmic flow. We're in the divine rhythm, and things are going great. And oops, something happens, and I get triggered. First of all, I might have a clenching in my belly, and my shoulders go up to my ears. Okay. 
some, sometimes that seems like anger, but if it starts in my belly, it's probably fear, so I feel scared. Well, if I feel scared and I'm close to you, I think it's your job to make me feel less scared so I can get back into the flow. But it usually doesn't work that way. Have you ever tried to get somebody to do something you wanted them to do, but they did not want to do? <laughs> How'd it work for you? <laughs> it doesn't usually work for me. <laughs> yeah. But what we can do is instead of trying to get other people to be different than who they are, because when we're trying to get somebody to be different than who they are, we have forgotten that they are different than us. Unique, individualized expressions of the divine. Their purpose, their goal, their way of being may be different than mine. And if I'm busy trying to get them to change, all I'm really doing is expressing my need for control. Not so much in the flow over here. But what we can do to move from I'm really scared to being back in the flow is communicate. I'm noticing I'm feeling scared. It's that simple. And thank you completes response. Thank you for telling me. So let's practice this. I notice I'm feeling scared. I notice I'm feeling scared. Yeah. When we share with each other what's going on inside of us, what we're experiencing, we're actually practicing intimacy. Into me see. That's what we're practicing. So if I'm being a drama queen and I'm mad and I'm yelling, that would tell you that I'm probably not very kind to myself first. But if I'm going to yell at you, I've lost the sense of the fact that you're a unique, individualized expression of God. I'm in drama. I'm totally out of the flow of love. And the nicest, the most kindest, the most caring thing that you might say to me then is, thank, thank you. you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for sharing. Because when we're close to people, Closeness comes from people being able to see inside of us, to know what we're experiencing. I've lived with, with Mindy for nine or ten years. I can't remember. It's just not long enough. <laughs> but I don't always know what she's feeling until she tells me. And I'm grateful, whatever the emotion is, when she tells me. This is what I'm feeling because then I know what's going on in her. And I have lots of possibilities. But the first one usually is thank you for sharing what you're feeling with me. I appreciate you telling me. In our modern culture, it's really easy to go tell six other people. Oh, did you know? <laughs> Let me tell you. And other people are usually quite happy to hear if they're into drama and adrenaline. Tell me more. What else happened? And then what happened? But when we can be in a space of love and share it with each other, to talk about what's going on with each other, we're really opening that space of being one in love. We're really opening that space of heart-to-heart -heart connection, which is what, considering the fact that we are made of love, that that's who we are, that's what we're seeking. We're seeking to express love and when we are expressing love we're in the flow I have a friend who tells the story of his wife standing in the kitchen and he came in and he said to her hey you want to go ride bikes with me and she said I'm really angry at you he said oh thank you for telling me you can be angry but do you still want to go ride bikes <laughs> do you still want to play with me we can have all of our feelings and share them with each other. And when we're really in the flow of love, we can play together. And that bike ride's probably going to help all that energy of anger simply dissipate. Or we can do something different. No, I'm mad at you, so I'm going to stay home. I'm going to bang the pots and pounds around in this kitchen, and you just go have a good time on your bike. But when you come home, I'm really going to give it to you for going. That's control. That's drama. That's what many of us have been shown or modeled as love. But when we are open to hearing, really hearing each other, we can stand in the flow of love. And another person 
can be exactly where they are. We don't have to change them. You can be mad, you can be sad, you can be scared, you can be irritated, you can be frustrated, you can be joyful. And we can be in the flow of love. Because love truly is this expression of the power, because love is a power. But so often we treat it as an emotion. And emotions are actually the neurochemical traces of our past. Something most of us don't want to know. Oh, I think I'm angry about what I'm angry about right now. But actually, when I'm angry like that, I have projected the past onto the current situation, and I'm probably not even in this now moment. I'm way back there with whoever it happened with. And we often think, you know, it's mom or dad, but our siblings, mm -hmm. we spend more time with. So sometimes that's where we have the biggest difficulties and the biggest sort of magnets on two sides. Mm -hmm. Rumi tells us to, our task is not to seek for love. We are love. We have the entire capacity of God within us right here, right now, in this moment. We don't need more love. We don't have to go and seek for more love. We're it. It's within us. The real question is, are we practicing it? And Ruby tells us how to do that. Seek and find all the barriers within yourself that you have built against it. What are your barriers to love? I've got quite a few. I could put them on a bookshelf. <laughs> I've got quite a few. But the beautiful thing is, when I seek them, whose voice is that that I'm hearing? Whose face am I projecting onto you? What am I wanting you to be different, but I'm not owning my own feelings about? Because, you know, if you're different, then maybe I'll feel different. If I can get you to behave different, I might be different. Maybe you guys don't play this game. <laughs> but it's a game I'm learning not to play. And it's giving real meaning to... Miguel Ruiz's four agreements where he says, take nothing personally. When I know who I am, when I know who you are, created in the image of and as the likeness of God, when I know that, when I see that, when I am experiencing myself and you in that, joy abounds. <laughs> and I'm not so likely to have the, the Velcro of something that's from my past because I'm standing in my power. And this is what we're inviting you into in community, to stand in your spiritual power, which is really truly the power that you have, to love generously and to be all that you were created to be. And we have a way of beginning a practice for that. Hopefully you've got one in your bulletin. It's called a self-appreciation journal. It has 30 days. Mindy and I are going to start this on November 1st. You're welcome to start it any day you want because in unity we do things the way we do things because we are unique and individualized. And it's a beautiful thing because then you are in your process, not in my process. So we're going to invite you into this practice. The first one is to look in a mirror and say, I appreciate you, talking to ourselves. Sometimes that's really hard to do. So hold your mirrors up for a moment. Take a deep breath and say, I appreciate you. I appreciate you. And you're talking to yourself. I appreciate you. And we, when we understand this oneness and when we can live from this consciousness of appreciation, when we can live from this consciousness of love, the way we interact with each other will truly be lenient in judgment. One of my pet peeves is in Harris Teeter parking lot, when people walk down the middle of the parking lot and then you can't go any faster than they're walking. <laughs> well, I can't tell you how many times I have had a good time, and I've had a good time in the grocery store, we're coming out, we're walking along, I go, Oh my goodness, I'm in the middle of the aisle. I'm doing exactly what my pet peeve is. So I recognize that behavior. So I can laugh at myself and just simply scoot over to the edge so other people can get by. 
we have every capacity for any behavior that lives on this earth, that exists on this earth. When we're able to look at somebody who's doing something that we don't like, we can say, wow, I wonder where I did that. Try that one on. I wonder where I did that. And when we're really willing to look, we'll find it. You know? And maybe it was another lot. If you don't find it in this one, go hang out in your dreams and find it in another one. But we do all of this. My choice, and I'm hoping it will be your choice, is to stay in the flow of love. To remember when somebody's doing something I don't like, I go, oh, I wonder where I did that. Hmm, isn't that interesting? Or I can be love. We don't need to sin love. When we see somebody looking like they're not being loving, if we send love, we're down in that same human consciousness. All we ever have to do is come back into our hearts and be love. Be that circle that surrounds us because it's all present within and all around us. We have the entire full capacity of love within us already in this moment. Touch your heart. I am love. I am love. And if you're interested in saying this with me, interested in the practice of living from love, would you repeat this statement with me? I live from a consciousness of aloha. And if you're really courageous, let's say the whole thing in the Hawaiian as well as in the English. So I'll walk you through it. The first one, I live from a consciousness of aloha. The second one, the I is actually pronounced E, so E, e. ho ka i ka-hi, ke-aloha, let's put it together, E, ho ka i ka i ke-aloha, can you hear the rhythm of it, E, ho ka i ka i ke-aloha, and then be one in love, together, be one in love, the writer of the book of Ephesians says, be humble, be gentle, be patient. See, the early churches, they had difficulty with this too. Mm -hmm. Be humble, be gentle, be patient. Tolerate one another in an atmosphere thick with love. That's what I experience here each Sunday morning as you guys come pouring in. That atmosphere that's so thick with love, it feels like we can touch it. We're inviting expansion of that. Make every effort to preserve the unity the Spirit has already created. See, we don't need to create more love. It's all here. We need to stay in the flow. Learn a few skills. I feel angry. Thank you. Thank you. I feel scared. Thank you for sharing that. I feel sad. Thank you for sharing Be humble. Be patient. Be lenient in our judgment and have a great time. I'm going to ask Jason to come and sing. Love, it's a circle that surrounds us. Look around and see the love that's on your spiritual community spaces for a moment. Love, it's a circle that surrounds us. And we find it on the faces of our family and friends. What a joy to be one in love with each of you.
memory of flowers. I feel blessed by the glint of the sun, the blue of the sky, the depth of the ocean. And allow the beauty of the Aina to bring you back home home to the love that you are and the power of love that beats in your heart and flows through your veins. Let that love wrap its arms around you. Let it be your circle and your foundation for being. Into this powerful circle of love, I ask that you invite someone in, someone who is hurting, that needs their own pono, their own coming back into the divine. For together we sing in harmony. And with our new community, We deepen more into a consciousness of love and we invite in our Jewish friends in Pennsylvania. And we invite in the police officers into healing, into strengthening. And now that our love is strong enough and back into Pono, we invite those who find a need to pick up a weapon, a harsh word, a fist, a stick, or even a gun. Our consciousness, our foundation of love, our arms wrap around our circle, our community, our world family in love. And yes, it is a road that never ends, but we are never separated from the divine. With this love, with this charity, with this compassionate heart, we now come into a time of holy and sacred silence. The land began to be written down, and some of them became traditional, some of them became classic. And Reverend Nikki's going to talk a little bit more about the culture of the music, but we grew up with it as part of just the way things were. In the 20th century, English lyrics were created for the song Pearly Shells, and it's very easy to learn. It's a song that echoes, so it gets repeated a lot, but I'm going to sing each one once, and then you guys will repeat after me, and then... Then we'll do it all together, echoing and all, and then we're going to have more fun than that. So joining on ukulele is our own Justin Lacey and Vicki Hayes.
Here we go. Early shells. Early shells. 